Never could I have imagined being, delivering a live presentation to a brand new, beautifully remodeled, and completely empty sanctuary. It's just plain sad. So I want you to know that we miss you, and we are so thankful you can join with us this morning. This morning we have six of us here to make this worship happen. We as a congregation and as a nation are in a funk right now of epic proportions. Every morning when I wake up, the first thing that pops into my head is, oh man, COVID. I know my day will continue to be different and unusual like they all have been since March. My dreams have even become surreal. Not even my beloved coffee, breakfast, and orange juice can fully revive my spirits because I know I will have to practice social distancing and wear a mask if I am to venture out. Unfortunately, the death toll from the virus continues to grow and our economy is teetering as many are, people are out of work while many others are receiving subsidies to stay afloat and help prop up our economy. Coupled with the pandemic are the double standards that have plagued our friends of color for centuries. We recently watched footage of George Floyd being slowly suffocated in front of our very eyes by those entrusted to protect us. We also witnessed snippets of Ahmaud Aubrey being harassed and killed while out on a morning jog in a suburban Georgia neighborhood. Charges on all the alleged perpetrators in both incidents coming very late and only after much protest. And just this week, we watched video of Jacob Black being shot in the back seven times by Wisconsin police. Equality in America is still just a hope and not a reality. To add insult to injury, we find our nation being led by one of the most duplicitous leaders our country has ever seen. We listen in disbelief and wonderment at the words he speaks, not knowing if it's fact, fiction, or fantasy. Every day seems to bring about new revelations of questionable judgment and unprecedented behavior, as demonstrated by the recent superfluous post office changes. Our democracy is starting to look more and more like an autocracy. Couple all of that with an election year with so much on the line and it's enough to make your head spin. November cannot come soon enough. We must all be proactive and spread the word to everyone about the importance of voting. Every vote matters. After a while, these thoughts and feelings start to take a toll on us we are beaten down by the sights that we see, the words we've heard, and the isolation we face. We're saddened by the lack of compassionate interaction with our friends and family, and we're concerned about the potential longevity of the current situation. If you're thinking similar thoughts, it's important to know that you are not alone. A recent Census Bureau survey found that one in three Americans are reporting symptoms of depression and anxiety more than three times the rate from a similar, similar survey conducted in the first half of 2019. Former First Lady Michelle Obama recently revealed in a blog that she's suffering from low-grade depression. The reason, she says, is the pandemic race relations, and the political strife surrounding it all, saying, I'm waking up in the middle of the night because I'm worrying about something, or, or there's this heaviness. I try to make sure I get a workout in, although there's been periods throughout this quarantine where I've just felt too low to work out. She's also frustrated by Americans not wanting to wear masks, saying, it's almost like there's a limit to our sacrifice. And it was about a month, and then people just got tired of the virus. It's been disheartening to see so many people who have grown tired of staying at home because the virus didn't impact them. She goes on to say, We are living through something that no one in our lifetime has ever gone through. The idea that what this country is going through shouldn't have any effect on us 
that we should just all feel okay all the time, that just doesn't feel real to me. She says it's important to allow yourself to know what you're feeling, unquote. Michael Phelps, the most successful and decorated Olympian of all time with a total of 28 medals, 23 of which are gold, is now married and a father of three. He recently shared his thoughts in a live interview saying, the pandemic has been a challenge I never expected. All the uncertainty, being cooped up in the house, and the questions, so many questions. When's it gonna end? What will life look like when it's over? Am I doing everything I can to be safe and keep my family safe? This is the most overwhelmed I've ever felt in my life. That's why there are times when I don't want to be me. He says the way he copes is to get back to the gym every day, to exercise, and says it's important to take a step back and a deep breath. Go back to square one and ask yourself, where are these emotions coming from? Why am I so angry? He finds comfort in writing these feelings down in a daily journal. He says, there are times when I don't think it can get any worse. And then Boomer, my four-year-old, will give me a hug and just say he loves me. When you absolutely least expect it, it's literally the greatest thing in the world. Another way he has found solace is by giving. The Michael Phelps Foundation has committed grants to add social-emotional curriculum as part of the IM program he created for boys and girls clubs throughout America. Lastly, he says his kids can fall down, hit their head, cry a bit, and 30 seconds later, they're all running around the room laughing again. They've moved on. They're resilient. They live in the moment. That's what we all need to do, live in the moment, unquote. So how can we continue to deal with this, and when will it end? When can I see my mother again, who is quarantined in a Florida retirement home? When can I hug my recently widowed father again without him having to worry about getting sick? Some of the answers can be found from others before us. John Lennon is quoted as saying, there are basic, two basic motivating forces, one fear, two love. We are afraid, when we are afraid, we pull back from life. When we're in love, we open to all that life has to offer with passion, excitement, and acceptance. We need to learn to love ourselves first in all our glory and all our imperfections. All hopes for a better world rest in the fearless an open-hearted vision of people who embrace life. Mahatma Gandhi said, when every hope is gone, when helpers fail and comforts flee, I find that help arrives somehow from I know not where. Supplication, worship, prayer are no superstition. They are acts more real than the acts of eating, drinking, sitting, or walking. It's no exaggeration to say that they alone are real. All else is unreal. And the great Dr. Martin Luther King once said, I have decided to stick to love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Unquote. We can also find peace and comfort in literature, books that accentuate positivity and wholesomeness and make us feel good and take our minds off of our current situation. So basically, no POTUS books. No POTUS. I'm pleading with Bill Watterson, the author of Calvin and Hobbes, to rekindle his humorous writings and bring back to life Calvin and his friends. Nothing can relieve stress and tension more than a good laugh. We can also find happiness and comfort in our pets by loving the heck out of them with lots of companionship as they give us back wagging tails and purring sounds of unconditional love. So the answer to our problems lie in every one of us. Your loving spoonful can be found from the words and sentiments just spoken in this sermon. Here's a refresher. Love, compassion, resilience, 
worship, humor, companionship, physical activity, prayer, family, emotional awareness, giving. These are more than just words, but can be incredible sources of strength and emotional fortitude, strong enough to conquer any obstacle in its path and formidable enough to move a nation. With this awareness, we must remain committed in continuing our quest for equality, compassion, dignity, and the pursuit of truth and transparency while fighting for our democracy. We must work to make it so and never, ever give up. Renowned philosopher Confucius said it best, I think our greatest glory is not in falling, but in rising every time we fall. Amen. Blessed be.